and Julie Malik working as a resource person academic at the National Translation Mission. It is my pleasure to introduce Professor Nadras Kilai, a retired professor, Central Institute of Indian Languages. He was a principal of Southern Regional Language Center, deputy director and founder of Bhasa Mandakini of CIIL. He has functioned as a language advisor to government of Singapore, trainer and expert to Mahatma Gandhi Institute in Mauritius and National Institute of Education of Sri Lanka. He contributed materials for training teachers of scheduled minor and tribal languages. He was the editor of the international research journal EFLT. He has written, edited and produced 124 books, 310 audio cassettes in 9 languages, 36 multimedia packages for teaching learning languages and published about 250 research articles both in Tamil and English and coordinated in the production of 290 visual documentaries about Tamil languages, literature, art, culture, etc. He has trained so far about 59,000 teachers of various languages. He received an award Padaipu Chamal Scholar for Excellence by TRERA and a Scholar for Excellence in Tamil Linguistics by Tamil Mulial Sangam. Professor Nadras has delivered lecture to the earlier batches also. Now I invite Professor Nadras Pillai to deliver the lecture about the linguistic issues in translation. Good morning, uh, uh, Dr. Tari Khan. I'm really happy that I got the chance to share some of my views to the participants here. I request it because otherwise I'll be talking to nobody. <laughs> Unknown faces. So I wanted to see the face and talk to them neatly, nicely on their ears. Okay, that, that was my uh, simple request. Thank you very much for the request. Now I go on to my to my PowerPoint. Okay. This is my talk about the linguistic issues in translation. This is a, perhaps I do not know how many of you know linguistics, but still with a view to have either this one, I will give some introduction also to all of you, linguistic issues in translation, and then uh, are there issues? Now, my simple question is, are there issues? Are there any problems in translating the sentences? Yes, there are. There are the phrases. Yes, there are word order. There must be the vocabulary. Definitely, there is. There are problems. Okay. How to solve it? How to find solutions for the for them? Yes, there is a way for it. The problem solving mechanism. This mechanism is called as linguistics. That's what I want to say. The simple thing is it's called linguistics. But how to go about? Many of us do not know. Let's let's see now. The content we want to content is different. This has, this has problems, unless you know the content, unless you know the gist of issue of the content, you cannot fully say that. Okay. Now, we are thinking of the sentence structures only, not the content. Now, what is a language? Do you think, many, many of you, do you see that anything? Any, any, do you see any difference between these things? What is language? What is language? Language is one of the primary media of communication. This is a very simple talk, right? Simple definition. What is language otherwise? Language is a bundle of rules. What kind of rules? We have to see that also. Now, for example, I give you one rule now. Later we will discuss. Okay. Subject plus object plus verb. That is yes, no, we. We call it. And another one is subject plus verb plus object. This is a word order in sentences. Okay. If you take English and Indian languages, take English, we said yes, we were language. Subject, verb, object language. Okay. Whereas Indian languages, verb final, always. So that means subject, verb, object, and the verb. So this gives a lot of problems. So unless if it's a long sentence, you have to find out where the subject is, where the object is, or where the phrase is, 
and finally the verb. You have to change the word order as per your language, isn't it? So language is a bundle of rules. There are rules. And language is a bundle of skills. All right. Skills are listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Normally we say L, S, R, W, whereas we add I add two more observing and translation skill. Because we are translating, I add translation is also a skill. So unless you develop yourself the translation skills, you may not be able to translate it better. Okay? A translator cannot neglect the role of language rules. This is what I would say in the process of translation. So does that mean that you should know the language rules for better process, for better translation, you need to know the rules of a language. Languages are different. You must remember this one. Languages are different. If they are different, they are different in their components as also. Correct? So vocabulary, phrases, sentence structures, etc. They are different. Translators must know the language rules of both the languages, both the source and the target language for better translation. We need better translation. I always say for better translation, you need to have the knowledge of the rules of both the languages. For example, sentence structures. I give you two, three, four examples. There are morphological versus syntactic. What is morphological and syntactic? We'll see. The boy who came to my house did not go to the club. It's an English sentence. How will you translate into your mother tongue? Just think of that. If it's Hindi, for example, I say you. Jo ladka. Mere mere gar aaya. Wo. To yo to and otherwise you have to say. Jo and to you have to use it, right? Just like English is a little different. You have to begin with the English. Who is used as a related pronoun? It's a related plus construction. You need to have who in English. Whereas in Hindi, you need jo. Jo ka aya tha wo. So you, you have to have jo and wo. You have to. Whereas in Dravidian languages, we don't have the, such a construction of who, related pronoun, or jo, to, wo, etc. But we have the Related construction and marker added to the verb. One that, for example, va hotel plus va plus tense marker plus a. It's a suffix, a simple a. If you add to the verb root stem, this becomes a related clause. If it's a Kannada also, banda or Tamil banda, banda Malayalam like that it goes on. Okay, which now a is the marker for the related participle in the Dravidian languages. So these are different. So unless you know these differences, you cannot fruitfully or better translate into your mother tongue. Our next one you take, if you come to my house, I will give the book. How do you translate into Hindi? Yadi tum ayeto, right? Yadi you have to use, yadi ar jodi bagar etc. Yadi tum ayeto, you have to use to. So that means the structure is different. And the same way, Dravidian languages, Again, it's a morphological. That's why I told in the beginning, it's a morphological in Dravidian languages. It is syntactic in the other languages, including Hindi and the Aryan languages. You can say English also. It's a syntactic. Sentence structure goes. Whereas in the Dravidian language, it's morphological. You have to add the suffix to the word. Verb. Okay. So, vandal, vandal. In Tamil, it is vandal. Ni enude vidhik vandal. Tamils are also there. So, just listen to that. You have the opportunity to listen to many more languages. I will give the book. I know I need it. Okay. Uh, Malayalam it is Bandangil. So again, you see the wise Bandre in Canada it is Bandre. So it goes which uh, is it goes in language Dravidian languages with the uh, verb root. Another one, third one. He came to my house and left after lunch. How will you say in uh, Hindi? We have in Indian languages we have a really good technique. Using verbal participle form. Verbal participle form is like akar, jakar, like that you can say. Okay, in uh, uh, Tamil and Dravidian language, you say verbal participle form is there. Bandu, again, it's from the verb. Bandu ponan, bandu hoda, bandu poi, like that you have to use that in Malayalam also. Okay, so in that way, with the three examples, I could establish that. There are differences between the languages. There are between the structural differences. There are rules here. We must know that. Now, 
with this introduction, we go down the role of linguistics in the, the today's actual topic. You see the picture, you have to de develop yourself for tra better translation. The figure shows that. Now, linguistics, I'm not going to teach you linguistics because it's a very vast subject, but to give you little knowledge of what is linguistics so that you can develop. It's only an introduction to linguistics. What is linguistics? Linguistics is a scientific study. You see, it's, remember, it's a scientific study, not a simple study. Like science, it's also a scientific study of language and it involves the analysis of form and meaning. Form is the structure, form is the word, form is the sentence, form is the text, okay, and meaning and the language used in context. Context, you see, context where really everything differs. You in one sentence in a context is differently, different, it means differently, in another context it means differently. There are words also, in one context it is uh, different and another context. So, context is more important. That is called the pragmatics in, in linguistics, the language used in a pragmatic in a context. So, there are a lot of uh, layers of uh, language, structural language, phonetics is there, phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, pragmatic, discourse analysis, etc. This I am not going to give you fully, but still I want to give a little uh, knowledge about this one. Phonetics is the study of physical property of sound, speech sound, production and perception. How you produce the sound, how you receive the sound is more important. That's phonetics, okay? And then phonology is the study of speech sounds of a particular language. Phonetics is general. It talks about the sound system of all languages, whereas in phonology, we study the phonology for a sound system of Hindi, the sound system of Marathi, the sound system of Kannada, like that with Tamil, etc. We go. Okay. Morphology is the study of internal structure of words. That's what I was telling. Uh, if you say the uh, leaf class in Tamil or in Dravidian language, it is morphology, structure of your word. Bar plus in the plus R. So, all is the suffix for uh, if class or the conditional class. So, this goes internal structure of your word. Or, for example, in English, we say walk, walked is there. Work, worked is there. This we have to study. And want, wanted is there. Get, got is there. Begin, began is there. So, these are all the internal structure of words. Words so and affixes, we have to study that. And now let's see syntax is a study of how words combine to form phrases and sentences. We follow how you construct a sentence. Simply adding words will not give you a sentence. See? There are rules for that. Semantics is the study of meaning. For example, the meaning of parts of word, unnecessary. What's the meaning of un, you and un? It's a negative connotation, isn't it? So necessary, unnecessary. Or words also, note. Note is a verb or uh, noun. What do you say? It's a verb. You say a verb, I will say noun. So that means in the context only, note the point is a verb, bring the note is noun form. So it means the context beside the meaning, isn't it? So as well as far as whenever you are translating something, the context only is necessary to translate particularly some words in the uh, target language. Or combination of words, textbook, whether to write it text, having gap and book, or textbook together. So these are all the rules for combining words or the compound nouns or compound verbs. Sentences, idioms and proverbs are there. We have to be very careful about that. Now, other components are little introduction I give you. If you feel it's good, it's good. Okay, pragmatic is a study of how utterances are used in communication acts. That means in that context. For example, you is there in English. In Tamil, we say ni, ningal, tangal. We say to tum up. What will you use of these things? Can I use tum for you? Or I do you use up? So it depends on that. You are level with me. I consider I should have, uh, I suppose I want to say not um, Khan. I do use up. And maybe my friend here, some of my friends, I can use tum. And little younger friends, I can use two also. That means words are there in the language which need contextual usages. We should have the knowledge of these things. Our discourse analysis system, you are my dear friend, suppose I say, you in uh, Hindi, how do you say? Tum or Aapun? It depends on 
who, who you are. Okay, that's the problem with it. So you are my friend. If you translate into your language, you will face a problem. Tu meri or mera, meri or mera friend hai, or tum, or tum mera, or aap mere, etc. etc. There, isn't it? So this has to be very careful. This course analysis, this analysis of language using text, spoken or written text is important. Okay. So if you get a paragraph as as an example, I say you have to see the whole thing. So when you translate, do not go sentence by sentence in translating a text. You have to read the whole paragraph and then go for translation. Another next one is stylistics, the study of linguistic factors, rhetoric, diction, stress. I may use uh, tum and you may use ah. For example, I'm telling. So why? That is my style. Sometimes uh, uh, you have to use, let's say, <coughs> there's some other words also. It depends on your background, your experience, your exposure, etc., etc. Okay, and semiotics is there. This is also necessary for the study of signs and sign processes. Maybe in the text there are signs, like uh, see in the uh, so slide, G is there. One uh, red box with an arrow is there, and green box with the phone is there, and this is the sign, isn't it? You know the meaning of this one. So these are called semiotics. If I use something like G or Google or this one for WhatsApp, you should know the semiotics. Or for example, in literature, we have been using uh, uh, nouns like animals like fox, deer, lion, elephant. For example, I am telling she is walking like an elephant or he is walking like a lion. But then a lion, you cannot say, you have to change it. Or these animals bring the qualities of the is a fox. If I say, if you, if you translate just like that, it may not give the meaning. So you should know the character of these animals also while translating. So deer, for example, these are all very much used in the old literatures as uh, symbols of some qualities. Okay. So these are all problems though. So semiotics is also necessary. Now let's go to applied linguistics. There are three important uh, areas where the linguistics work. One is language teaching. We don't talk about that. Translation, we are talking about that. Lexicography also we are going to talk about because that also is part of translation. But uh, you need vocabulary. You may have to coin vocabulary. You may use differently vocabularies, etc. Translator cannot neglect any part of descriptive linguistic. Whatever I'm telling, I was telling, this is called descriptive linguistic study. If he is to make adequate translation. If you want a better translation, you should have this knowledge of linguistics. Okay, that's all my point is. What is translation now? We talked about what is language and we talked about what is linguistics and I'm asking you what is translation. This is a very simple thing. Translation is a process of bringing the text of one language into another. What is interpretation then? Normally, interpretation is the spoken form. If a uh, Prime Minister is Prime Minister of our Prime Minister Honorable Modi is talking something. If you want to translate into your mother tongue, for example, Tamil, I will interpret. I will not translate each and every sentence of him. Okay? I'll get the gist of it. That's the interpretation of the translation. Interpretation has different meanings in different contexts, which we have to think of. Okay. Now let's see. Some language differences, linguistic differences in translation text strategies. You should know, as I told you, languages are different. Okay, when there are linguistic differences in all the levels of language, there is possibility of taking different strategies to translate. All right, as we are telling three, four sentences, I gave you. You have to take different strategies, whether to use the structure as it is, or you are going to give the gist. If translating from English. Or Hindi or Tamil, the strategies will differ. Am I right? Just I gave you three examples. If it's from English, you should know what is the if clause is, what is uh, uh, relative pronoun, relative, etc., etc. A lot of things are there. Or Hindi, if I am going to translate from Hindi to Tamil, I should know what is Yadi, where did you use Yadi, where did you use Yadi, or um, Jolanta, etc., etc. A lot of things are there. I have to change my strategies for this. Language families of India, just an introduction to this one. I give, there are four language families in, in our country. Aryan, you know about that, uh, north of India's approximately. 
Dravidian India, sir. It's there all over India, of course. Anyway, Munda is there. Even uh, Dravidian is spoken one part in uh, Pakistan, Balochistan. Okay, Brahui is the word, language. Anyway, Tibet to Burman language, from Tibet to Burman language in the sense from, let's say, approximately Ladakh to uh, Tripura, Manipur, you can say. Okay, in that way we can go. And uh, here we take mainly two languages for our discussion, Tamil and Hindi. Okay, I cannot uh, give examples from other languages. If you belong to the, the, the Aryan group of languages, you translate into Bengali or Punjabi or Marathi, etc., or Manipur, etc., you just try to do that. If Tamil I am giving, you can, uh, speakers of Kannada, Telugu, Malayalam can translate into their language with English as reference point. Okay? And features of source language and target language and the hypothesis which make, we make it. Cognate and non cognate languages. What is cognate language? See, when you talk about two languages for translation, you should know whether the source language and target language belong to the same family or different families. If we call it a cognate language, those languages belong to the same family of language. That means Hindi, Marathi, Punjabi, or Bengali, Orissa, Oriya, and Assamese, etc. If you see the groups are there, it does group similar in linguistics, linguistic and cultural features. Cultural features will may differ. The Bengali is way of dressing a, a sari, and a Punjabi way of dressing is a little different or a Marathi is different. So cultural differences are there, but linguistic similarities may be there. Okay. And similar in vocabulary and structure. Suppose if you say in Hindi, kar, kar, karna. In uh, Bengali it is karna. Just voice only that uh, first uh, syllable changes in O. So you say karna. Here in Karnana, in English it is karna. Or let's say pani in Hindi. In Punjabi it is pani, na, retroflex sound. In Marathi is pani. Kela, Kela, etc. So similarities are there in vocabulary and structures. That's why I'm telling it's easy for, if it's a cognate language, it's easy for translation. Easy to find out equivalences. It's easy to find out. If you say Kela in uh, Hindi, when you are translating into Marathi or Marathi to Hindi, Kela is there. You can imagine it's Kela, maybe Kela, or Pani, maybe Pani, etc., etc. You can easily find out the equivalences. For example, Tamil, Kannada, Telugu, Malayalam are cognate languages. All right? How do you say that? We'll see. I'll give you some examples from Dravidian languages. Cognate languages. Okay, example. He came is the sentence in English. Avan Bandan. See the, the, the sentences. Avan Bandan. It is Tamil. Avanu Bandanu Kannada. Avan Vannu Malayalam. Do you see the similarities there? Anyway, uh, Avan is the same. Avan, Avanu, Avan. The subject Avan is he. Came is Bandan, Bandanu, Bandu in Malay. She came, but suppose if you say she came, see, Aval Bandan. Avalu Bandalu. Aval Bandu. If you see, the, there are a lot of similarities. 90% similarities and 10% maybe may be similarities. Okay. So then it is easy for you from translation from Tamil to Kannada to Malayalam or vice versa. Okay. Or let's see non cognate languages. Languages belong to two different language families. That's called non cognate. Okay. Translation will be affected because of the differences in the linguistic and cultural features. A lot of cultural features are also there. Tamil and English. Or Hindi, or Manipuri, or Urdu, or non cognate languages. If you compare Tamil with other languages like English, Hindi, Manipuri, Urdu, they are non cognate languages. So it's a little difficult to translate. But you can still find out the equivalences. For example, Hindi, O Aya. O Ai. O is same, in, same for he and she. But how do you understand whether O is a he or she? By the verb. Aya or Ai. You know, I am not going to explain much because most of you know these differences between the subject and the verb or agreement between the subject and the verb. Tamil, you see the same sentence, O Aya, Aval Bandar. O Ai, Aval Bandar. So these are two entirely different sentences, entirely different structure. Okay. 
Only thing is uh, there is an agreement between the subject and the object, subject and the verb. This is the only similarity between these two. Okay, but you must remember when you translate these are two cognate, non-cognate languages. It's a little difficult to translate. Little difficult only unless you know these three differences, you can uh, translate well. Now, contrastingly, if you know want to know the rules of two languages, what do you do? There is a linguistic section in linguistics called con contrastive linguistics. Okay. Learn the differences before going into the actual job of the translation. Now you understood, right? That there are problems. Oh, I, uh, if you translate into Tamil, or say, Avan Vandan Tamil, if you are translating from Tamil to Hindi, Avan Vandan, O, Aya, or I, etc., you must remember. So before involving yourself in translation, you must know the differences between the languages. Okay. Now, little about. Think of that. We have been talking about and just a review of what yet. What is language? What is linguistics? What's the under linguistics? What are the languages components? And then contrastive analysis. We are talking about the fourth point. Is semantic syntactic uh, systematic study of a pair of languages. Systematic study of a pair of language, two languages. Okay, with a view to identifying their structural differences and similarity. You should know the structural similarity. You should know the differences. Then one day, as a translator, you can do better. It's helpful for translators and teachers in designing translation material. How to design? How are you going to design your translation? That is necessary. Word to word translation or transcreation you are making or paraphrase. This you have to decide before going into the job of translation. Do you follow me? Translating a text of the social language. It also helps evaluating. You yourself should be ourselves should evaluate our translation once we complete the work. We have to compare it with the social language and again do the exercise of evaluation and interpretation. As you know now, we, people have told you what is the difference between translation and interpretation. Okay. Now some more features I will give you so that you will understand it better. Now let's say English prepositions, you know, is a grammar. You know about the prepositions in, of, by, etc. are prepositions. Whereas Tamil, they are all markers. There, for example, in, 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 is used as il, it's a suffix. You have to add, we did, we did, we did room, suppose if you say room, room il. You have to add il in the room, room il. Of, again, of is, uh, is son of somebody. So here we had say in is there, Udaya is there. Okay, these are all the uh, so differences. By, for example, is a preposition in English. By a knife, whereas in Tamil it is kati. Kati is knife all. I use the same word, knife, knife plus all, knife all. You have to say. So it's a suffix. Hindi preposition, both positions are me, garme, aru me, uska, uski, uske. So half is only one single form, whereas in Hindi it makes a difference because it, it changes, the marker changes according to the uh, noun or the object you possess. If it's a masculine car, if it's a feminine key, and if it's plural, you have to use K. So these are differences. Say is knife say. So in Hindi also there are markers, there are post positions, etc., but not no preposition. Because sometimes in there in uh, Hindi, but there is no preposition in Tamil or Kannada or Telugu or Malayalam. Okay, so we use only the suffixes. Now let's see finite verb structure. I give you some examples of why, how it is difficult to translate. That's all. So English verb plus tense marker. Okay, finite verb is he walked. Walk plus ed, you know now, but that that only ed is not only the suffix to make a past tense. Irregular verbs are there. Bring, spring. Okay. For example, I give you a word. The past tense form of bring is, can anyone tell? Brought, brought. Am I right? Somebody told? Brought, anyway. Brought. And spring, what's the past tense form of spring? If I say sprout. Right. Yeah. If I say sprout, am I wrong or right? But you have given the answer anyway. Thank you. Because though the forms are same, bring and spring, the past tense forms are different. Bring, brought, spring, sprout, if I say, 
I am wrong, but I have used a strategy. If you know, this is called analogy, analogical creation. Based on one model, we create, we learn things like that. So bring, if the pastoral form of bring is brought, spring must be sprout. This is what I say. But remember, languages are different, the forms are different. Okay. So whenever somebody learns a language, new language, if you know this, this strategy is called analogical creation, uh, over generalization or over generaliz generalization. Bring brought to spring, spot, etc. A lot of problems are there. We also do things in when we learn. learn. Okay. Tamil, for example, the finite structure form is verb plus tense marker plus PNG marker. PNG is person, number, gender marker. Okay. As in Hindi and in other Indian languages as well, except in Malayalam. Malayalam, there is no PNG marker. Okay. But here, verb plus tense marker plus who they say. Uh, who you have to add who, but nothing like a uh, number gender markers are not there in Malayalam. Whereas in Tamil, you say, Avan Bandan, Va is verb, in this the tense marker, past tense marker, An is the suffix PNG marker for the subject Avan or he. If it is the subject is Aval or she, Va plus in the plus art. Bandan. See the difference? Va in all, Van in plus art. All are on. Only the suffixes, the ending suffix, PNG markers are different, the remaining same. So this is a kind of, I come to Hindi, verb plus tense marker, plus gender marker, and plus auxiliary verb. Sometimes it happens, there are two, three kinds of uh, sentences. O, aya, aya, atha. Atha hai, I'm sorry. O, atha hai. Present tense form, o, atha hai. So, a plus ta is there, what is that marker? And then you have to use hai. O ati hai. So that means there is a general auxiliary verb. Hai is also used in Hindi. Well, see the past tense. O aya, o ai. Okay. A plus a, a, ya, a plus e, you have to use it. So this is a kind of analysis of formal finite verb structure in the these languages. Agreement. What is agreement? I have been telling you about PNG marker, etc., isn't it? Subject verb agreement is there in Tamil. Tamil, Kannada, and many other languages also, except Malayalam as a tone, because they, they don't use the PNG marker, or there is no agreement between. For example, Avan Vannu, Aval Vannu, Avar Vannu, Adu Vannu, etc. The verb form is Vannu, 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 and the subject changes, and the verb remains the same. Finite verb remains the same. Avan Vandan, as I told you, An is the suffix for he. Aval Vandan, she, he. Okay. So this agreement is uh, uh, very much essential. I, I will give you some more examples in the next slide. But there are languages where you have object verb agreement also. Am I right? Some of you know these things. There is a subject verb agreement. There is an object verb agreement is also there. We will see. Adjective and the noun agreement is also there as in Hindi. Many of the languages you have adjective and noun. Whereas in Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, Malayalam, we don't have adjective and noun agreement. There's no gender agreement or number agreement. So let's see, English, do we have this kind of agreement? Yes, there is. Only in the third person singular in present tense. He goes, she goes, it goes, I go, we go, they go. So that means the third person singular in the present tense, there, is, there should be an agreement. He writes, she writes, it writes, etc. etc. Okay. So there are languages, but only there only. But in other places, there is no subject and verb agreement in English. But we have in our Indian languages. Now, I think this in Arabic. Some of you, I think, uh, Arabic speakers or Arabic knowing persons are there. Unlike in English, adjectives in Arabic language come after the noun. You see, normally adjectives, good boy, good girl, etc., it comes before the noun. But in Arabic, it comes after the noun. For example, a big tree in English, Arabic, Shajarato Kavarat. That means tree big. Noun comes first, big comes. Or a nice girl is a Triplaton Latifa. Girl nice. So here, this is what I told you in the beginning languages are different, the structures are different. Okay? And a clever man, Rajalan Takyam. Man clever. So you see the differences, we'll say, 
if you think of in your language in indian languages normally many of the indian languages we have the adjective before that now whereas now see agreement in, in hindi there are three types of agreement in hindi kumar aa raha hai okay the subject is kumar raha is the agreement there is an agreement between these two aa uh, let's say rani aa rahi hai so rani is the subject the verb has to agree with you can see the the marker there kumar has to agree with the verb or the verb has to agree with the subject in in both the ways you can say now the second type of uh, agreement is kumar ne roti khai kumar is a aya or a male or masculine only but khai is used why khai is used because here roti is the object so in a um, Uh, transitive verb. When a transitive verb is used in Hindi, so we, you have to add ne to the past tense. You have to add ne and the roti. Ah, uh, if it is a feminine gender, you have to use khai. Here, it doesn't agree with the subject, but with the object. And the third one is acha ladka, achi ladki. So these are the three types of agreement. Suppose I use, I want to translate from Tamil to my other tongue too. in the i must know this one unless i know this i cannot so better to take uh, you will translate to your mother tongue than other language unless you have the complete knowledge of the grammatical systems of both the source language and the target language people also i i don't know whether some of you are because many many are there i can see when i can read the names there may be some so many people because uh, we have been talking about aryan language one hindi i taken Tamil I have taken the Dravidian language, so Tibetan Burman I have taken Manipuri as an example. Adjective before the noun. Afaba Oja. Afaba Oja is adjective marker plus good. That means teacher, good teacher. So Afaba is good, Oja is a teacher, and the adjective after the noun is also possible in Manipuri. That's why I am giving you that. You see, after the noun also the adjective can come. Oja Afaba. My one one is there. Apa my my is one. Teacher adjective good. So good teacher. Again good teacher only. You see compare compare with sentence one and two. Apa bar oja and the oja apa bar. Okay, these two. And adjective and agreement. Up. You see. Aja ba aja bi nupi. Nupi is woman. So adjective should agree with that. Now. Aja ba aja ba nupa. man or boy or pajabi nupi macha or pajaba nupi macha and some boy so you see the difference like acha ladka achi ladki in manipuri also there is an agreement between the adjective and the noun whereas there are one more this one like uh, arabic it, the adjectives can come after the noun like us like other languages this can come before the noun also okay now let's say Some pronoun system we compare. Tamil, English, Hindi, and Manipuri. I have added there. There are four languages. Avan, for example, in Tamil, Tamil is English. English meaning is there. I did not read it. Avan he, English Hindi wo Manipuri mahak. Avan she, Hindi wo Manipuri mahak. See the difference here. He and she are same or same form in Hindi and Manipuri. How to know? Who is masculine or feminine, or mahak is uh, feminine or masculine? Whether it denotes he or she, unless we know the previous sentence before using the pronouns, you you cannot use that. So you know, when you translate also, it becomes a problem for both uh, Hindi and Manipuri. Let's say our guy they they makoi in Hindi Manipuri, adu is it wo in uh, Hindi madu in uh, so Manipuri. But as you see, away they they see the difference between our head and away they in all the languages they is same for human as well as non-human they is same for human and non-human. But as in Tamil, you have to use uh, they uh, different our head and away etc. etc. Many periods you will also, but uh, we are not going to discuss about that. Now let's say word order. Remember, I was telling about the word order in the beginning of the lecture. Okay. Strict word order in English. It's very strict. You cannot use as we like. 
Kumar killed a snake. So if we change the word order, what will happen? A snake killed Kumar. So the meaning differs. So that's why you cannot change the word order in English. Whereas in fluid in Indian language. See, for example, Kumar Sambuko Mara. Sambuko Kumar Ne Mara. Or something, Ne is there, okay? Uh, you have to add that. Kumar Pambai Kondran. Pambai Kumar Kondran. Kondran Kumar Pambai. Any combination is possible because of the markers, the case markers, Ko is there in Hindi, I is there in Tamil. That will carry out the object position. You can change the position of the object or the subject. It doesn't matter at all. So, how to translate from English? If the word are the same, unlike our languages, we have to be very careful that, for example, I read this one. The girls had gone to school at 8 a.m. when the parents had gone out for work. If you want to translate, what you have to do? You start from the, the end. The last sentence, last phrase you made, okay? I mean, last one. when the parents had gone out for work, jab, okay, that should be the first sentence. The girls have got, gone to school at 8 a.m. This is the word order in our languages. Okay, you translate, just translate in your language. The girls were playing with the old newspapers in the corridor outside their house. This is the sentence. How to begin? We start with the girls. Now, if you start with the girls, you will not end in the correct translation. But okay, in the corridor outside their house, we start with that. Corridor made with the old newspapers. Okay, Saath, the girls were playing. Okay, now this will be hard because verb is at the end. So this is a technique too. The clue is you start from the last phrase and go one by one. From right to left, if you go, you will arrive at your language and structure. This is a technique to translate. There may be differences also, but still, this is one of the clues. That's why I call it it's a clue, it's not a rule. Okay? You can translate easily. Semantics, for example, I'm giving you some meaning only. I'm not going to give it details. Meaning of words from source language to the receptor language or target language makes another problem in translation. Sometimes you have to coin. Sometimes you use it differently. Sometimes you have to see the context. Sometimes see the sentence structure. All the things. Okay. Social context and linguistic context you have to see to use. It. Issue, for example, in English. What are the, there are two meanings, not three meanings. Issue is given. Issued a book. This issue I don't want to discuss. It's a problem. And there is one more meaning. Can anyone tell? Issue. Is there any one more meaning is that issue? I think for well, issue is the child, the child, uh, child. Uh, child, yeah, child. Okay. I have five issues. The sense of three plus two. Anyway, I it's not that true, but I just am telling. So issue has different meanings in different contexts. Arkana, for example, in Hindi, eat get. Eat and get. Is there a meaning of kana is get? Can anyone tell me? Kana has the meaning of get also. Oh, he got his uh, beatings from by a chapel. How do you say? <laughs> right? Uh, here he didn't eat the uh, chapel. He got beating. So get is also there. Or in Bengali, chai kaben, chai kaben. So you eat. Uh, this one, tea. So, drink kana has different meanings. Drink also is there. If you say, my chai ka, uh, pita ho, in Bengali you say, drink kaya, kaya ho. Okay? Or kaben, uh, kaben, etc. Rapni kaben, etc. For example, Tamil padi. Padi has different meanings. Five meanings at least. Depends upon the context. Padi is to read. Padi is a step. Padi a uh, lot of things are there, measure, etc, etc, a lot of meanings are there. So unless you know the context, you have to be very careful about the context before you use or before you select your word, okay? Translation shares of meaning. Several uh, subjects. Excuse, excuse yeah. me, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Khana also refers to a place as well. Um, so can, can, you give me an, can you give me an example? 
yes teh khana word is there uh-huh. jana khana is there uh-huh. they are referring to the places where certain things are kept for oh, example yeah, yeah. correct 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 i agree with you that's right you are right you are right there. also sir mai khana mai khana sir but the khana is used as inflection sir not the word oh i see i see so that means khana now has khana is a noun form khana is a verb form khana is also inflection form right so uh, thank you very much for both of you you have given me a little more ideas about that but it has a verb also uh, now is added to indicate the uh, so some uh, this is that the check box anyway this time i example i am giving you shares of meaning there are meaning shares also it's time to translate our ideas into action are you going to translate it in the real sense how will you translate your action ideas into action it's a different meaning isn't it translate is make it change it and the cars are translated into scraps after once you use it for 20 years you have to send it for scrap the car 15 years normally we can say 20 years they are translated here translation is not translation in the real sense of what we are talking about okay so we is tran- changing it you know so towards the end i am we are going now let's show yes pos tagging in the computer now the world is uh, a computer era and we are thinking of uh, machine translation etc how to feed all these things whatever i am telling fana for example how we are going to feed the computer whether it's a noun form or a verb form at least we can and then whether it is getting or drinking or uh, inflection forms etc a lot of changes are there how are you going to give this knowledge to a computer this next question if you are going to work on machine translation you have to think of that google translation perhaps you know that's on uh, statistical basis sometimes not sometimes many a time this uh, are right finally if you wrong sentences many of the sentences are wrong maybe the order is changed maybe the suffixes are changed etc etc whereas if you give the linguistic knowledge <coughs> sorry one minute so parts of speech tagging is there p o s tagging is there each word must be tagged as a noun or a verb or whatever may be grammatical forms are tagging and was the task of labeling each word you have uh, let's say 3 lakhs words in a language 3 lakhs words are to be tagged before going for machine translation okay even for human translation if it's there the dictionary we use the dictionary for the translating that is necessary labeling each word in a sentence with its appropriate parts of speech nouns verbs adjectives adverbs etc etc for example support support as a event is a verb or a noun are stages the verb of noun fly house fly is also there i am going to fly so verb or noun how to get the meaning so it's really difficult isn't it how to solve it as per the dictionary there is one possibility you can use the dictionary and the second one is morphological analysis you have to analyze the word i am i am flying ing is there so it must be a verb i can arrive at some with some rules of the language or now pos tagging this helps in translation lexicography and uh, and language teaching so you must for example i am telling noun etc i am not going to read the whole thing just observe noun and uh, the tag will be nrp pronoun prp like that there are tags in the language in the computer the computational linguistics or even cal there is a Uh, or then uh, there is a section where we can get these tags you can use them corpora corpora okay corpora section is there ldcil yeah i remember now ldcil is there another one if you happen to go there or happen to know somebody you can get the tag set with which you can work on or even tag the materials are also there in ldcil so that will help us for translation unless we give this one to translation for the computer computer cannot work okay now i'll give you one uh, example is same how the online it's online classes are little bad sometimes little good for sometimes because of the the pandemic period we have to there's no other way i can share my views with the 64 
or 54, 64 persons, okay, right? But what happens, as I've been telling about the language and the meaning, unless you know the exact meaning of your word, you cannot work. Here, let's say it's a simple thing. One on one. <laughs> Okay, the meaning you now we understand. Oh my god, one on the other. Now he has this. The meaning of reposition. <laughs> so, you see, the, see this one? Repositioning is a little different, okay? My God. So this is translation. Translation, are you knowing the meaning? <laughs> My God. <laughs> Do you follow? So, do you follow what I said? This is the meaning. This is a simple video clip shows how people understand it. Not only online classes, I'm not joking this. This is what when you translate something into your mother tongue, this may happen as I have been explaining to you. Now, this is a small circle. You have the problem, observe it, find out methodology, analyze it, and find out, evaluate it. These are the five steps when you translate into your mother tongue or whatever the language is. Okay. Thank you very much to all. Wish you all the best.